Coming to you from Bravo Performing Arts, this is the Hour to Empower, the podcast created by Brooks students for Brooks students. Today you'll hear many of our series, including What's Up, Tech Talk, and our newest segment, Marie's Review. Do you want to learn about creating a podcast? Do you have an idea for a topic or a podcast segment? Any 6th, 7th, or 8th grader can join our team at any time. We meet every Tuesday and Thursday after school. If you'd like to join or want to know more, please email bravo at op97.org. If you like what you hear today, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for the latest episodes of Our Tune Power. Okay, okay enjoy, enjoy the, the show. show! Hello, everybody! And welcome to What's Dup, a segment where we talk about what's trending up, what's trending down, and what's good. I'm your host, Kieran, and today for what's trending up is something that is on a lot of people's minds. In fact, what we will be talking about today is a big event. We will be talking about some award shows. Yes, that's right, some award shows. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we had the Golden Globes. Shout out to all the winners and nominees, especially Chloe Zhao, who made history being the first Asian to win Best Director. So now, this weekend, we have the Grammys. But not only that, but also the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. Make sure to vote for that. So today... I'm going to be talking to you about everything you need to know going into Grammy weekend. At least my take on it. So let's get started. Okay, first we are going to be reviewing the nominations. Essentially, who will win. Now, do I really know who will win? Of course not. But am I going to say who I think might win? Sure. Now, today I will be reviewing the awards Record of the Year, Song of the Year, and Album of the Year. Now, if you don't know the difference between Record of the Year and Song of the Year, basically, Record of the Year goes to a specific recording of a song, and the artists, producers, and engineers helped make it. Then, Song of the Year goes to the actual songwriter slash musician, and the process of creating the song. If you want more information, check out Grammy.com. That's where I got my information from. Now, let's get started. First, we will be talking about Record of the Year. The eight nominations are Black Parade by Beyonce, Circles by Post Malone, Savage by Megan Thee Stallion featuring Beyonce. Yep, that's right. Beyonce is nominated twice for Record of the Year, and a total of nine times this year alone. Now that's amazing. We also have Billie Eilish's Everything I Wanted, Doja Cat's Say So, Dua Lipa's Don't Start Now, Rockstar by DaBaby featuring Roddy Rich, and the song Colors by Black Pumas. They're a soul duo that is also nominated for Album of the Year and Best American Roots Performance. Now, all of these songs are really good, but the song that I personally think will win is... Savage by Megan Thee Stallion featuring Beyonce. Yes, that's right. Now, I do have to give some credit to Billboard.com, as that helped influence my decision. But I was already pretty sure that a song with Beyonce would win this award. Though there are other factors to be considered when predicting who will win. For example, the Dua Lipa song, Don't Start Now, was really a trending song this year. I mean, I feel like this was one of the biggest radio songs, other than some Harry Styles songs or other artists. And Dua Lipa is having quite a year with the Grammys, too. In fact, she's also nominated for five other awards this year. So Dua Lipa could have it, but I mean, after last year's Grammys where Billie Eilish dominated, I'm talking Song of the Year, Record of the Year, Album of the Year, Best New Artist, and Best Pop Vocal Album, she could snag another Record of the Year. So Black Pumas are not to be underestimated. Though they may be new to the game, their music is incredible. And Rockstar was also a big hit for a lot of rap fans. So really, it's just about who's voting, and really, it's anybody's game. Though, if I had to pick one, as I've already said, I'm going to go with Megan Thee Stallion featuring Beyonce. Next, we have Song of the Year. 
Now, this is fairly similar to Record of the Year, so we're going to breeze through this one. The eight nominations are Black Parade by Beyonce, Everything I Wanted by Billie Eilish, The Box by Roddy Rich, If the World Was Ending by, B- by J.P. Sachs and Julia Michaels, I Can't Breathe by Her, Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa, Taylor Swift's Cardigan, and Post Malone's Circles. Now, these are also some really good songs, but I think that the winner will be Taylor Swift. Huh? What? Yep, Taylor Swift. And this is because Taylor Swift hasn't won a Grammy since 2015. And sadly, she wasn't even nominated for her hit album, Reputation, from 2017. She was nominated for a few for her album, Lover, but didn't win any awards. So, or Grammys at least. So, personally, I think the Grammys owe it to Taylor Swift to give her Song of the Year. Though voting is already closed, so I'm not sure at all what's happening. So really, please don't judge me if she doesn't win, because there are some other really fantastic songs in this list of nominees. So actually, there might be a pretty decent chance that Cardigan won't win. Though, let's be real here. Listening to that song really does make you want to put on a sweater. And to all those people who were voting, I'm sure they were in the mood for a nice cup of hot cocoa and a sweater. (laughs) Unless there were some really warm. So really, it depends. Finally, is Album of the Year. Now, Album of the Year is a big award, mainly because this isn't just one song that they are giving the award to, but this is an entire album that features a bunch of really good songs. The nominees are Folklore by Taylor Swift, Chilambo by Gene Aiko, Colors by Black Pumas, Everyday Life by Coldplay, a band which I highly recommend everybody here gives a listen to if you haven't already. I'm sure you've heard at least one of their songs. Jesse by Jacob Collier, an R&B artist who has never lost a Grammy that he has been nominated for. Impressive. Women in Music Part 3 by Haim, a group that a music group that consists mainly of three sisters, each with the last name of Haim. We also have Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa, an album that was packed with hits, and Hollywood's Bleeding by Post Malone, an album that was also loaded with hits. Now, if you like Post Malone, you may be like, Hollywood's Bleeding? That album came out in 2019, and this Grammy nomination is for albums that come out in 2020, right? Well, actually, no. You see, with the Grammys, there is something called the eligibility year. Now, this means that any music from September 1st, 2019 to music from September 1st, 2020 is eligible to be nominated for the 2021 Grammy Awards. That went for the 2020 Grammys Awards, too. That was last year. For example, take Dan and Shay's song, Speechless. Now, this song was released in 2018, though it won a Grammy in 2020. This is because it was released around a month after the eligibility year started. It was released in October 2018, a time where the people that were deciding the nominees for the Grammys were almost done with coming up with the nominees. So, it was able to be nominated for next year's Grammys, as any other song after September 1st would be able to be. Even though people were listening to that song in 2019, before the 2019 Grammys even started, they'd already come up with the nominees, so you can't really add something in. So, that also means that all you Olivia Rodrigo fans are going to have to wait about a year before we even find out if Driver's License will be nominated for a Grammy. Which it probably will. Okay, anyways, who I think will win Album of the Year is either going to be... Taylor Swift... Jean Aiko or Dua Lipa. I think this is going to be a close one, but all those albums were really popular. And since Dua Lipa is nominated for six Grammys this year, she could be the Billie Eilish of this year. Just as Billie Eilish was the childish Gambino of last year, who was the Bruno Mars of two years ago, who was the Adele of three, who... Eh, that list could go on forever. Anyways, what I'm saying is, I'm still not that sure who's going to win Album of the Year, as Post Malone is a favorite to many, and Coldplay's album had some really nice music. Anyways, we'll just have to see. Oh, and before you go, another thing that you should know when watching the Grammys is that Beyonce only needs to win four Grammys to hold the record of most Grammys by a female artist, which is currently held by Alison Cross. And if she wins five, she will hold the record of most Grammys by a person alive, currently held by Quincy Jones. And if she wins eight Grammys, she will hold the record of most Grammys ever. (laughs) 
which is currently held by classical music conductor Sir George Solti. So, we'll just have to see. Fingers crossed, though. Well, that's it for today's episode of What's Dup. I hope you enjoyed it and are now ready to go watch The Grammys, airing Sunday, March 14th. Hosted by Trevor Noah, an author which we have previously talked about on Amazing Authors from our Black History Month episode from last week. Check out next week's St. Patrick's Day themed episode, and I'll see you next time on What's Dup. Review. I'm your host, Marie Spencer. Marie's Review is a segment where I review movies or shows from different platforms, like Disney Plus or Netflix. Some of the movies or shows I tell you about may include my opinion. Today, for the first segment of Marie's Review, we are going to talk about a TV show called Lost in Space, and we are going to talk about a movie called Tall Girl. Let's get started. Lost in Space is a TV show on Netflix. Lost in Space was a show in 1965, but in 2018, they rebooted the show with a new cast and some new storylines. Lost in Space is about a family named the Robinsons who went up into space with other families to live on a different planet, but something went wrong on the spaceship that was taking the families to the planet. After crash landing on an alien planet, the Robinsons' family fight against all odds to survive and escape the might to and escape and they might even find a robot. Here's the cast of Lost in Space. Maxwell Jenkson as Will Robinson, Taylor Russell as Judy Robinson, Mina Sandwell as Penny Robinson, Molly Parker as Marianne Robinson, and Toby Steffens as John Robinson. Lost in Space has two seasons, but Lost in Space is returning for a third season this year. My opinion is that Lost in Space is a really good show to watch if you like space, danger, scarce, alien, sadness, and funny shows. Like I said before, you can watch Lost in Space on Netflix. Next up is a movie called Tall Girl. Tall Girl is a movie on Netflix. Tall Girl was aired in 2019. Judy, the tallest girl in her high school, has always felt uncomfortable uncomfortable in her skin, but after years of slouching, being made fun of, and avoiding attention at all costs, Judy finally decides to find the confidence to stand tall. I'm a tall girl, and I love this movie. I feel like if you like funny, romantic, and girls who take the lead, then you are going to love this movie. Here's a tall girl cast. Ava Mitchell as Judy Kerman, Sabrina Carpenter as Kimmy Kerman, Angel Kinsel as her Helen Kerman, Steve Jane as Richard Kerman, and Clifford Glunk as Jake Duckleman, and Luke Elsner as Stick Moreland. And again, if you want to watch Tall Girl, you can watch it on Netflix. Thanks for listening to Marie's Review. I'm your host, Marie Spencer. See you next time. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Tech Talk. I'm your host, Gavin Griffin. Today's tech topic is the reversal of the Chicago River in 1900. Let's get right into it. First of all, I wanted to say that the reversal of the Chicago River really helped decrease waterborne diseases coming from the river. Also, before the Chicago River was reversed, the state of Illinois passed a law saying that everyone in Illinois should have clean and diseaseless water. The reversal of the Chicago River really helped practice that law. The reversal was so big that it not only included building lots of canals, but also a lot of digging in the river and road slash bridge building as well. That, in my opinion, sounds like a lot of work, especially when you have to use dynamite to blow up the granite layers underneath a full-grown city, because that's what they had to do. They also used steam shovels and trenches to help dig up and take away the dirt. They even had to invent and use new ways of reversing the river a lot faster. One of those new ways are large towers on either side of the river with a cable running in between them. On them, a big scoop of dirt could travel on it. Then it would drop down on that side, and then it could take it to who knows where. 
That was a really big deal, and in my opinion, the reversal would get done a lot faster because of that. In the end, they excavated 42 million cubic yards of rock and soil, enough to fill the Willis Tower 20 times. That is a lot, even if you really have efficient technology. Speaking of efficient technology, all that inventing created more efficient technology for doing this sort of thing. The reversal of the Chicago River really helped Chicago participate in shipping transit by water. Also, a lot of people in St. Louis tried to sue Chicago because they thought then the Mississippi River would now be contaminated, as it is the source of their drinking water. However, that suspicion was proven to have been untrue. To conclude... The reversal of the Chicago River in 1900 was considered the largest citywide earth-moving project in history. The technology used for this project was also used in the construction of the Panama Canal, but that's a whole other story. That's it! Thanks for listening to this segment in Tech Talk about the reversal of the Chicago River. Thanks from your host, Gavin Griffin, and I will see you next time! This was the Hour to Empower podcast, a podcast by Brooks students for Brooks students. We are your essential source for news, comedy, interviews, and more. Hour to Empower is brought to you by Bravo Performing Arts at Gwendolyn Brooks Middle School. For more information on how you can be a part of our shows, clubs, and classes offered by Bravo, please go to bravoperformingarts.org and subscribe to us on YouTube for the latest episodes of Hour to Empower. Thank you for listening.